and that means get rid of all the noise, and get rid of all the outrageous claims, get rid of all the absurd costs, and get rid of all the tax inefficiencies, get rid of all the emotions of investing, and just own the market and hold it forever. So uh, people should not feel that dumb is a handicap. Dumb is an advantage. Uh, that's probably why, why these books in, for dummies, computers for dummies, investing for dummies, and so on, are so successful. You know, when we get outside of our own area, let's face it, we're all kind of dummies. So I think maybe the greatest tribute would be that we've created here a company where dummies can and will prosper. It's very hard to do. We have a whole Wall Street marketing system. Wall Street, the investment bankers, the brokers, the mutual fund industry, this whole system, which is what we call a supply push system. Their job is to sell stocks. Wall Street, broadly stated, is a giant marketing machine. They're always optimistic. Uh, they can't be pessimistic because people wouldn't buy. So we have a, we have, the biggest thing we must do, I think, Mary, is to get investors educated as to the realities of investing. We have a lot of illusions about investing, and I'll just give you a few numbers that will explain these illusions. If you started with $1,000 50 years ago and invested it in the Standard & Poor's 500 index, you would have multiplied your money about 135 times over. You'd have $1,000 going to $135,000 on the surface. Then you start thinking about what's behind that return. It's around a 10.5% return. Well, first, uh, there is the cost of investing, around 2.5%. Uh, that's about what it comes to for mutual funds and individual investors. So you're down to 8%. Uh, and then you're talking about taxes on that. That's maybe another two percentage points. You're down to 6%. Then you talk about the cost of living, real dollars, as compared to the nominal dollars that we measure everything in in this inflationary age. And you're down to about a 3% return rather than a 10% return. And that $130,000 has dwindled to about $3,000, believe it or not. And which, of There's course, a, someone at home is listening to this. They're like, well, why do I even bother investing? Ah, well, the reason you bother investing is because suppose you put your money in the bank and get, say, an average of 4%. You pay a tax of, let's say, 1%. That leaves you with 3%. And if there's 3% inflation, your $1,000 grows to zero. It grows to $1,000 at the end of the period. So you have to do something. Uh, the one thing we know is, absolutely know, is the biggest risk of all is doing nothing with your money, putting it in a mattress. So you have to accept the system for what it is. And you also have to accept the system that despite the huge returns that we had in the 80s and 1980s and 1990s, the greatest bull market in the history of, of mankind ever, anywhere, longest, strongest, uh, isn't going to recur. A lot of what gets people investing now is, I think, the idea that uh, it will come back all over again. It won't come back all over again. So the first thing I'd say to the investor is be realistic. And it turns out that capturing the market return in other words, you don't have to pay all those taxes. You don't have to pay all those fees that I described in that example. The index fund gives you that market return, 10.5%, maybe less, uh, let's say, 0.1 or 0.2. That would be 10.3%. Uh, you're going to have 3% for cost of living, no turnover cost, no sales charges, and no other expenses. And you're going to get about 7% return. You don't have to accept that lower return. You have to educate yourself to realize that all the foolishness of our system, outguess the other guy, uh, be smarter than everybody else. We all think we're above average investors. We're all average before cost, and we're all below average after cost. This is not a mathematical mystery. Everybody knows this. You know we're all above average drivers. We're all smarter than the other guy. Uh, this, the stock market, is not Lake Wobegon, Mary, believe me, where everybody is above average. It's getting to the simplicity of capturing the returns that the stock market gives and the returns that the bond market gives. Move, move, move. Three billion shares change hands every day. The rule for the investor is exactly the opposite. Don't do something. Just stand there. So there's a direct conflict between what's good for the business, taking all that money, $400 billion a year comes out of your returns to our investment system. Uh, and the rules for the investor to be successful.